when it comes to the point that you're going to order some new O-rings for your air gun or other project, the two main pieces of information that you need to take are the internal diameter of the O-ring that you want to purchase and what they call the section which is the outside diameter of the actual piece of rubber ring itself so the ID is the internal so on this this is about this is about a 19 millimeter and then the section is the thickness of the rubber so this is about a 19 by 3 you're best to take two or three different measurements and obviously be very careful not to try and squash the rubber too much so I'm fairly confident that this o-ring is a is about a 19 point three if the o-ring that you've taken out of your air rifle is in the same state as this absolutely tated uh, it would be very hard to try and probably get a, an accurate reading off of that to know what size o-ring you need to replace it with so you just have to measure the component parts that you've taken it off so the inner diameter or the outside diameter of the inner part and get a, a measurement for that and then likewise with the other part the other section uh, that way around take a reading off of that and then take one from the other and then the o-ring that you're going to require will just be a, a light interference fit on both components when you're buying o-rings they can also come in different grades of hardness this will typically be displayed on the packaging or on the advert as a percentage NBR 70% is the sort of average for you know, most rings in use o-rings in use today however if you are going to fit a, an o-ring in a moving part like a regulator piston or on the piston of a spring air rifle you may be better going for a uh, 90% like this one it's hard to demonstrate how hard this is uh, on the camera without you being able to touch it but this is about a 90 uh, this one here I think is about a 50 and I don't know if you can get a gauge of the, the, the fact that that's much softer on the camera but to the touch you can instantly tell uh, the one in the middle 70 I'll try and show you with my strain gauge uh, and see if you can see any deflection so let me move those out of the way this is the 90 and if I put it on put it on there you can instantly see that it's quite hard because trying to just balance the gauge on it it just wants to slip off because it's just hard and circular so that's down at about 10 what's that 10 pounds of pressure but if we switch over to the the one which I think is uh, about 50% and stick it on and we go down to 10 pounds you can you can sort of see hopefully that the o-rings become quite deformed and I think if I take this off and hold it to the camera quickly you'll be able to see the dent uh, just there look it's just coming out now where the gauge sat so if you are going to buy some o-rings to do a repair on a air gun that's got anything that's got moving parts you'd uh, probably be best go for a harder uh, NBR number uh, such as this 90 where if you're trying to fit a regulator or something into a, an air gun and the cylinder inside has got some deep scratches which you can't seem to polish out and you want something soft that's going to take the full form of any marks in the cylinder then you'd be better trying to order uh, a softer o-ring such as such as this one 
hopefully this will also demonstrate the difference between the hardness of the rubber uh, I've never done this before but we'll give it a go we've got a piece of fine glass paper and we'll start off with the, uh, the soft o-ring if I pull it along there you can see that it wears quite quickly a bit like when you're using a, a rubber to rub out a pencil mark when you've done some writing this is uh, the 70 and it's a little bit little bit less and then finally we'll have a go at trying to put the same pressure on and using the using the 90 well that doesn't <laughs> The last one doesn't show much because I think the because the O ring's narrower, it's uh, that much force. It still marks it, but typically, typically, if you were to get the O rings the same size, the 90 one when you pull it along with the same force would leave generally slightly less because it tends to wear wear less, which is why it's good on the moving surfaces. Now, my general guess is that most of you have never had your air gun to bits. Uh, you know it's got O-rings in it and you sort of know what they're doing, they're keeping the air in, withholding it in the cylinder but you don't know what condition they end up in over time. Uh, O-rings just like uh, elastic bands and other rubber products such as your car tyres, push bike tyres etc uh, deteriorate so you all know that if you leave elastic band outside in the you know just normal atmospheric conditions over a few weeks it'll become all dry and crispy and your bicycle tires will you know sort of do the same over a number of years but it's the same with the o-rings in your air rifle so these two here on the right they've probably been in an air rifle for i don't know probably about two years uh i don't know if you can see on the camera but the shape of the actual o-ring it's starting to become uh, square and deformed it's still still very rubbery still very pliable but if you've got it in your hand you can see that there's, uh, there's some misshaping on it and the same with this I think it might be a bit easier to see with this but this edge here uh, I think you can probably see it starting to go quite square on that face. Again, still quite rubbery, still okay in your gun. You know, if you've had your gun to bits, you can still put it back together, uh, and that should last out a bit longer. This O-ring has been in for a number of a number of years, probably six years. Uh, on the this is the inner face this face this is facing into the air reservoir it looks quite quite clean and it's quite uh, quite rubbery uh, if I turn it sideways on you can see that this edge has now become very square and sharp and you can see where it's deformed into the lip of the edge of the air cylinder like it's supposed to and on this side it is very square and it doesn't look too bad until I hold it up to the camera and twist it and you can see all the cracks and the deterioration. On from that you can end up in this condition and this is just, can you hear it cracking, some fine cracking noises and you can just sort of pull it in, pull it apart, this is just they're just in that much of a state and now it's not flexible at all along this edge it's just listen hopefully you can just hear that starting to crack that has just completely had it uh, and then finally the seal which most often goes on your air gun is the inlet, inlet valve seal now that goes because, if you look how much shape that is, when you're filling your air gun up, the air around this seal actually gets excessively hot, probably up to 100 degrees plus. So you're filling your air cylinder quickly, the air goes in, it's excessively hot, and there's a lot of pressure there, thousands of pounds per square inch, and it just cooks the inlet seal 
and absolutely knackers it. Uh, it's the most common repair any gunsmith anywhere in the world will do on a PCP air rifle is to replace that seal. Uh, the best thing to do is to fill your air gun as slowly as you can you know just stand around and wait for a minute or two whilst it slowly fills up uh, and that will preserve the life of this seal uh, these are also more liable to go if you've got a pump uh, pump in with a, an air pump you know such as a hills pump fx pump etc does tend to burn these seals out even quicker uh, and this is just that is just absolutely solid you can just put your nails into it and it just comes to bits uh, now the next thing I'm just going to say is a little tip if you've got a PCP air rifle and it is slowly leaking you're really best just to keep it topped up if you can't get to a gunsmith to get some repair work done on it the reason being is even when the seals are in this state on the rest of the cylinder uh, they still hold the air in relatively well if you let your air gun empty out of air completely these se these cracked seals uh, will stop sealing they'll sort of contract because there's no pressure to hold them into place and as soon as they contract they really split open and then when you go to fill your air gun up again after the air gun has stood empty for a couple of weeks the air will literally just go out of most of the joints and it will then need a full service so to prevent that uh, just try and keep your gun topped up with air if it's got a slow leak keep it topped up uh, and that will prolong its life just a little bit longer but don't let it stand around for a long time without any air in it Now, countless times I've seen people struggling trying to get O-rings off of various things, not only just to do with air guns, but all sorts of mechanical and hydraulic assemblies. Uh, all you really need is something fairly strong, but small and sharp, such as a, a pin, meat skewer. And if you've got the object that you want to take the O-ring off, if you get the pin sort of on the centre line axis wiggle it down and then twist and bring up underneath like that it's the easiest way and then you can just pull it pull it straight off uh, so you just put it put it down the centre twist it underneath pull it up and there you can just simply roll it off of whatever assembly it is you're trying to take the o-rings off finally if you do change the seals on your rifle put a smear of uh, silicon grease such as Molycoat 33 just around the o-rings no need to smother it and lather it on just as a nice smear all the way round. The, one of the main reasons for this isn't to help the sealing but I have so many people say to me they cannot get they cannot screw the end plug out of the gun at all so it's absolutely jammed in solid. Uh, the reason for this isn't the thread is that tight but as the seal deforms uh, the rubber when it's dry because most air gun manufacturers do not lubricate the seals because you know they end up with grease and muck on everything and they don't want it looking dirty when it comes to your brand new so they just put them together dry uh, the rubber is a very good gluing agent and over years of it deforming into your cylinder it just absolutely glues the end of the cylinder in solid so you know countless times people speak to me and ask for advice about I cannot get the end out of my cylinder so once they've managed to get it out the advice on putting it back together is just put a smear of silicone grease all the way around the seal and then next time you want to take it to bits it will be much easier